Hello everyone, welcome to the lecture of Quality and Reliability Engineering. I am Milan Trivedi, Assistant Professor at LG Institute of Engineering and Technology. So in our earlier lecture, we are discussing about second chapter that is in Total Quality Management. In this particular chapter, we are discussing about the different tools and techniques in order to improvise the quality of the product or even service. Up till now, we have discussed about different quality tools such as Quality Circle, 5S Practice, problem solving processes such as DMAC, PDCA cycle, total quality control, total employee environment and lastly we had covered quality function deployment. In today's class I am also going to cover another tool to improvise the quality and that tool is failure mode and effect analysis. In short we are identifying this tool more famous as FMEA tool. This tool is also used for improvising the not only uh, quality of product but in order to improvise the service also right so what is there in this particular tool let us understand this is actually used to analyze the effect of failure of individual component whenever the failure happens we can easily evaluate that how does that failure had happened FMEA looks at the product and its element from the point where how and in what manner it can fail we do the analysis of all that three things that where does it fail, how it fails and in what manner it can fail. Okay? Now let us elaborate this FMEA as I already told that F is for failure in which we find out the potential causes of the failure. M is for the mode in which mode does it fails whether which or in other way if I want to brief then which are the different types of failures, ways of failures or even the different possibilities of the failure. E stands for effect that what will be the negative effect if the component fails and A is for the analysis which actually is nothing but it is a study of risk of the effect of the failure and how to reduce the particular failure. So these are the four different things on which we are focusing about. right? So how to do this FME analysis for that we need to go for a, this kind of table the first thing in the table is to enter the process steps and inputs let us understand all these things with the help of an example right being a mechanical engineer we all know about a casting process right so there is a casting process in casting only itself we are having some other different different processes right such as we need to prepare a mold we need to do the pouring operation we need to allow them to solidify there are a number of different different inputs in that so first of all if we are doing that casting process we need to write what are the different process steps or input in that okay so we will mention that over here in the first row the next step is to enter how do the inputs fail if we are doing any particular task which are the different possibilities of the failure or in what ways does the key input go wrong right we planned something but which are the different things which can fail our particular process that we need to write over here in the second step in the third step we write about how do the failures affect the particular output if this failure happens say for example in casting porosity happens then what will be the potential effect due to the porosity the component will get weaker and it will not sustain the load for which it has been designed right so that is the potential failure in the fourth step we write about what are the potential root causes right what causes the key input to go wrong we write that porosity may happens due to the porosity the component will get weak now what are the different reasons because of uh, which the porosity develops in the casting so the primary reasons we all know porosity may be due to the inefficient or insufficient venting right if uh, the gas are not able to evacuate while the component has been solidifying due to that the porosity happens so we need to write about the causes that what are the causes that key input go wrong in the fifth step we identify the current controls that what are the things which we do what are the existing controls and procedures that prevent either the cause or the failure mode we all know in order to avoid the porosity in the casting we need to provide proper venting so that will come under the current control part 
Sixth step is to assign a severity ranking to each effect. Say for example, in casting we are getting different different effects such as porosity, surface roughness, then uh, particularly if other we see uh, such as cracks on the upper part. So these are the different different effects. Then we need to give the severity ranking that which is the most severe one, right? Surface defect is actually least severe one because surface roughness can be easily corrected with the help of some removal processes. But when we discuss about porosity, it is not easy to recover the porosity once the particular part has been casted, right? The severity of that particular process would be higher. The next step, seventh step is to assign the occurrence ranking to the each cause, right? We need to give some ranking that how frequently that defect is happening. If we are analyzing 100 component, out of that if in let's say 10 components uh, the defect is happening, the occurrence rate is considered very high. If it is happening, defect is happening only in one or two components, the occurrence rate is low. Right? In such way we are giving just occurrence rate. In the 8th step, we assign the detection ranking to each cause. This detection ranking is nothing but how easily we actually detect the error which is present. Right? If it is easily detectable, then we will give some ranking. If it is not, we will give, give the rank accordingly. Lastly, that is to calculate the risk priority number. Right? This is having a one formula. We need to multiply severity, occurrence and detection. Then we will get the particular risk priority number. That will help us to identify that how uh, risky the procedure is if this particular mistake happens how risky it is or how uh, probability it is having uh, for the chances of failure of that particular part okay so let us understand the same thing with the help of one example so you will get the better idea this fmea is nothing but it is a kind of a case study we do for any of the process for or, or any of the product manufacturing right so here I am taking such example which you all had interfaced so that you can easily connect that thing and able to understand the topic. Okay. So I am taking one case study of ATM pin authentication. Right. Uh, now we all are using this ATM cards. Now what can go wrong? Right. First thing can go wrong is about the unauthorized access. Someone who had uh, who are using my card. Right. That is unauthorized access. Second one is authentication failure, means I am using my card but still I, I am not being authenticated, right? So these are the two different scenarios whenever the ATMs are being used. So what the company is doing, this company is doing FME analysis, he identified the failure modes. What are the potential effect of that? So in the case of unauthorized access, the effect could be unauthorized cash withdrawal will happen and because of that customer would be dissatisfied. The severity, how severe the effect would be on the customer. This is a very, very severe effect. That's why we are ranking it as 8. Out of 10, this ranking has been normally given. What are the potential causes? What cause steps to go wrong? Right? Now, what, when can this unauthorized access happen? Whenever the card has been lost or stolen. Right? So, we need to write about that cause. What will be the occurrence rate? How frequently is the cause likely to occur? So in this case, based on the past experience, they are giving ranking as 3. Then current process, how you control that particular failure. So in that case, corrective action is required. So for that, the company can either block ATM card after 3 failed authentication attempts. Right? So that failure won't happen. Right? Detection, how probable is detection of the failure mode or its cause. Right? So in that case, they are giving rank as 3. So we are multiplying severity, occurrence and the detection, then we can get the risk priority number, right? Second case, in the case of authentication failure, effect would be annoyed customer, customer will not be happy, severity is somewhat less. And when this can authentication failure happens, we all face this issue, right? Once in a life, we face this issue, right? But in India, it happens every now and then because of this network connectivity. We had just entered the pin, but still the cache is not coming out. So our authentication gets failed. But that reason due to maybe due to network issues, right? In such case, what control they can take is they can install load balancer so that network connectivity 
remains proper okay so the detection rank they are given and based on that they find out risk priority number right so for each and every event for each and every process of manufacturing we are giving this kind of risk priority number so that we can come to know that if this thing happens then it can have a this much amount of damage right that's why quality of this particular thing is required to be improved first that judgment we will get with the help of this fmma study and then let me take the case study of same uh, zone that if we are dispensing the cash right then these are the different scenarios cash may not disperse account may debited but cash may not come out and in the last case which is very very rare condition but if it happens you all will be happy that extra cash will be dispensed so for all that different different modes which are the different different potential effect that i have written what will be the severity that how does it affect the customer right that has been also been ranked over here what are the potential causes behind each and every failure that is also been written how frequently does it occurs that is been written what are the process for doing that thing or in order to eliminate that particular thing that is will be written over current process controls for that detection ranking is there and based on this multiplication of severity occurrence and detection we can find out the risk priority number right so you can see the cash is not dispersed is having a highest risk priority so they need to take the corrective action for that so the most corrective action is internal alert of low cash in atm is required right because the frequency of happening this kind of error is every now and then we all face this thing right cash is not getting dispersed because atm is out of cash but if it is coming out of cash they actually need to write the alert on the atm itself that's why in many of the banks atm nowadays message is there we are running out of cash right but still in on those machines this message is not popping we just try to insert the car and we are waiting for the cash and lastly the message pop up that unable to dispense the cash right for that you can do this kind of actions so that you can warn the trust of the customer right uh, i am purposefully taking this incidents because you all can correlate this fact and understand about fmea but this can be implemented in any of the industry another example of casting already had given we are keeping up to this in this particular lecture we are going to continue with other tools in our next lecture thank you